Welcome back to another episode of Marvel Maniac and MCU After Show. This is your host, Eric Cicada, a.k.a. Mr. Honest. It's my pleasure to be back here with you today to talk to you covering She-Hulk, episode 6, titled Just Jen. I'm going to be doing a beat-by-beat breakdown this week, meaning I will be watching as I go, talking and reacting, uh, as I've done for most of this season, uh, except for episode 4, I did kind of a take notes and react. How have you liked this season of She-Hulk, and if so, what have you liked about this episode? MarvelManiacPod at gmail.com. Your feedback is strongly encouraged. I haven't gotten a lot of it yet, so we're at a very early stage of the podcast, so at this point, all your feedback is encouraged. Last week, Jennifer Walters had to fight for the name she-Hulk. And this week, the episode is titled Just Jen. So, I don't know what that technically means for Jennifer Walters. However, she won't stop being She-Hulk anytime soon with a nine-episode run this season. I'm very happy with nine episodes. It reminds me of when we started covering WandaVision at the beginning of this podcast, with just a lot of story to unfold and just a lot to come. So, without further ado, let's start getting into this episode. Season 1, Episode 6 of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Just Jen. In the previously on, we get a reminder from Bruce to Jen that it's way too dangerous, dangerous for her to go out into the world after he was analyzing her blood samples and an immediate follow-up to the thugs trying to pierce her skin with that needle. Something that has been irking me ever since it happened. We also get reminded that Jen was kind of slighted by Titania, saying that this isn't over, and that she was kind of, you know, she was put up on blast in this trial. She had to kind of put herself out there that she, to get into the dating world, she had to go out there as She-Hulk. So, I mean, it wasn't super, you know amazing for her to go through all this and I'm going to assume that in this episode a little bit she's going to have to see some of the ramifications of a little bit of shame there but she's a strong confident woman so I I, I don't know I mean I'm, I'm going to really be interested in how she handles this going forward Jen opens an extravagant box at the beginning of this episode with flowers all over it and it's asking her to be <laughs> her bridesmaid um, from a friend named Lulu, and it bursts open with confetti and all that, and it says, duh, of course you will. Apparently, Jen was made a super suit by Luke, and she's going to wear a business suit to a rehearsal dinner, and uh, I'm trying to pick up some of the things that her and Nikki are talking about, but I'm too distracted that he made her a super suit, which I want to see, and I'm assuming it's going to be like season finale stuff, if not like an Avengers type thing. But he also made her a dress to wear. It's like a blue polka dot and white, uh, white, blue polka dot dress. Um, so we're gonna get to see She-Hulk looking quite fantastic this episode and going forward. And all of these um, garments made by Luke, the designer. This is fantastic. Nikki asks Jen, "Why does anyone have a wedding on a Thursday?" And Jen tells her that Lulu is an old friend from high school. She knows my whole family, and my cousin Chad is DJing the wedding. I'm sure that is going to be quite exciting. They gradually grew apart, her and Lulu, and they don't even talk anymore. So Nikki asks, why is she a bridesmaid? Because I think she just felt obligated to ask me, Jen tells her. And I felt obligated to say yes, because how do you say no to being a bridesmaid? That's a fair point. Not that I would know, personally. Jen turns to us and says, yes, it's a self-contained wedding episode, and if you think it's happening at an inconvenient time in the season, you are right, but I'm going to look great, so let's go. You know what? At least she's being honest with us, and it's in my name, and that's all that matters to me, personally. So if we don't get Daredevil this episode, we are probably going to get him in the next few. And I have a feeling that it's not going to happen this week, and if it does, it'll be a really great surprise. At the wedding, She-Hulk's high heel comes into view as her long green leg steps out of the car. Wearing a sleeveless blue dress with white polka dots and a mid-thigh slip, the six-foot-seven super-powered lawyer strides toward the group with a grin, and she is just ear to ear. And she looks great. I mean, even like, as I said in one episode, um, maybe the episode before last, or it might have been the last episode, 
the CGI sometimes isn't as up to par like they cover her up with that suit maybe for one reason or another no she looks the cgi whatever it looks perfect she looks fantastic the woman in the middle who i assume to be the bride is just like very stunned by uh jen <laughs> aka she hulk uh she's just like what <laughs> the women are going crazy over jen um one woman says that her ass looks perfect um, this episode is really hard for me to talk about. <laughs> I can already tell we're going to be in a, an interesting place, uh, talking about She-Hulk's butt. Lulu walks through the women and, uh, says, everybody has an ass. She says, can I talk to you for a second? And takes Jen aside. So elsewhere, she tells Jen, I can't believe you're doing this to me. And she's, and Jen says, what? And she says, taking all the attention away from me with your this. And she kind of like gestures towards She-Hulk. Jen insists that no one's going to be looking at me. All eyes are going to be on you. It's your big day. And she says, I know, it's my big day. Lulu says Jen to Jen that she doesn't want her to be all hulky at her wedding. And Jen promises that she'll just be regular Jen at her wedding. Just Jen, shall I say. I'm sure that line will come up in the episode at some point. You know what? I'm not sure. Maybe it won't. Maybe this is the reference to that. She gives She-Hulk a hug. And it's a semi-appropriate hug. Th this is the exact moment that She-Hulk breaks the fourth wall and says, Obviously, this is the one time I didn't want to show up as just Jen. To me, this is a win for Jennifer Walters because she wants to embrace She-Hulk. She's not trying to hide from the persona anymore, um, which is something that like I thought the title was saying at the very beginning. And then we get the title telling us, Just Jen. <laughs> Attorney at Law. I love that the titles do this. It is so self-aware and really funny. So in the next scene, they're pairing up groomsmen, which I feel not the need to name every single uh, groomsman. And Jen is in her blue dress, but she's regular Jen. So I like that this is starting to happen now. And I really like how there was an actual build up to this in the show. Um, it was kind of earned that Jen was going to be getting these superpower clothes. And this is like... A regular, not your regular dress. This was like a superpower. This is a superpower dress, not like a superpower dress, but a, like a super stretchy, you know, a Hulk dress. This is a Hulk dress right here. Jen finds out from the other bridesmaids and Lou that she's going to be paired up with Jonathan tomorrow, and he is apparently the best. I'm sure that he is not going to have some sort of catch that comes along with that. In Mallory's office, Nikki takes a seat by a window. We meet a man called Mr. Immortal. He's going through a divorce case in which he really needs help or else it's going to bleed him dry, in his, wo in his own words. Nikki uncomfortably shoes in and says divorce is hard. Mallory sort of gives her a look like, don't. Mr. Immortal goes on to say that he is a good guy. He doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But inevitably things go stale. So apparently this man is actually immortal and to get out of relationships and marriages he fakes his own death to get out of them. Mallory asks Mr. Immortal if he ever felt bad about this tactic, and he says, well, I'm a nice guy. I, I, <laughs> and, like, he's emphasized this a couple of times. People usually say they're, like, a nice guy or, like, a good person. Like, it, it's a little bit, like, they're, they're going to have to back that up a little bit, like, in my book, you know? Nikki and Mallory are both, like, kind of talking at Mr. Immortal about how this is wrong, and he literally just runs out of the window. Um, we know that he's going to be okay, but holy moly, mother almighty. Um, I can't believe, <laughs> I can't believe that I, what I saw there. That's insane. Not just a wedding episode. We are also in the law offices, and that was crazy. I, I can't believe that. We do see him recover on a security vehicle. People are freaking out um, <laughs> on the street below. Nikki says, at least now we know how he does it to Mallory. Back at the wedding, Lulu and Jen catch up, and Lulu is asking Jen if she's dating anyone, and there's no news on that front for Jen. Lulu tells Jen she'll find someone and not to feel bad. Jen says she doesn't feel bad, and then Lulu says she still has a little bit of time to Jen. Um, a little bit of sass there and sarcasm. Um, Lulu is clearly like a little tiny bit like jealous of Jen. Uh, little tiny bit of jealousy there. 
All of a sudden, Titania enters, and she immediately says, Hey, Jen, I love how you don't put in any effort at all, usually, and oh my goodness, Titania always coming in with a little bit of a sly remark towards Jen. Jen asks Titania, What are you doing here? This is my friend's very real wedding. You can't pull your crap here. Titania replies, the answer to your extremely rude question is I happen to be dating a friend of the groom and he invited me. So Titania has a legitimate claim to this wedding. Uh, unfortunate for Jen and fortunate for us we get to see a little bit more Titania this episode. Maybe we will get to see them brawl a little bit. Um, maybe, 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 maybe. Lulu approaches and she greets Titania with clear fan like a fan attitude. She's like, oh, you must be so busy with like 5,000 businesses. Like, you, you could totally see that Lulu is like fanning out over Titania. Jen tells Lulu right in front of Titania that she has weaseled her way into this wedding just to mess with me. That is so obvious. Why does nobody else see that? Titania tells Jen that she's being very loud. And then Lulu says, I hear you, Jen, I really do, but you sound totally insane right now. And as she's saying this, the look on Titania's face, and it's zooming in on her, her eyes, uh, it's completely validating exactly what Jen said. And oh my gosh, poor Jen, poor Jen Walters right now. Titania wouldn't just show up to my wedding trying to kill you or something, you know, I don't know. I'm literally just here to celebrate the love of Lulu and her groom. That's all, okay? I love the fakeness and sarcasm here. It is so fake yet so well played by Titania. Um, this is this is, this is leading up to a fight. I mean, this this fight might happen this episode. Jen storms off as Titania says, "Not everything is about you, Jennifer." Jen walks outside and takes a seat on a wicker couch and starts eating out of a goodie bag. And a man in a suit approaches her and starts talking to her. He says, I know it's a little weird. I still haven't perfected the least awkward way to approach a stranger. Jen says he could use a little work. And he says, work on that for the next time I bungle another intro. He introduces himself as Josh. She asks him if they gave him a plus one. And she doesn't understand the metrics they use to decide. He said they didn't, but he doesn't mind because his plan was to strike up a very normal conversation with a beautiful woman stuffing her face with candied nuts. Lulu runs out and tells Jen that half the event staff is leaving and quitting because of how she's treating them at that exact moment. <laughs> Lulu also tells Josh that she could use her help with something inside, kind of splitting the two apart. Uh, a little bit of chemistry here, as, as you can see, and as I can definitely tell, might, might be something going on here. So back in a conference room at the law offices, Mallory, Nikki, and Mr. Immortal sit in front of all of his friends former wives and husband uh and man they are pissed off Seventy-five thousand dollars of credit card debt and paul conveniently disappears the day of uh, the bill came uh one never saw the dime for raising spencer jr alone for all those years another spent ten thousand dollars on a new orleans jazz funeral mallory asked them how you all became aware of mr immortal's pattern of behavior it was because of me, says a woman at the end of the table. My friend sent me a link to a video posted on that site, Intelligentsia. The one for hateful man babies, says Mallory. Yep, that's the one, says the woman at the end of the table. She says, you saw this man walk into a busy intersection, and then he gets hit by four different cars. His body regenerates, and then he just gets up and walks away, kind of like we saw in the scene previously. I, of course, immediately recognize my idiot husband, Roger. I'll note that there are at least, like, over a dozen women and one gentleman sitting at this table here and uh, man this guy has referred to himself as a nice guy mallory mr immortal and nikki swivel their chairs together this is exactly what i was worried about mallory says not only did you fake your own death multiple times but you also forged multiple fake identities frankly all these spouses should be filing criminal charges you are lucky you're not in prison she tells him he says he'll never understand women Mallory says she's, he's going to get him the best deal she can, but he's going to have to pay. And he asks, why is she smiling? And she says, this is kind of fun. We'll see where that's going in a bit. They turn back to the table and we get back to Jen. So the groomsmen were playing Mario Kart and they all wrinkled their shirts. And now Jen is the one who has to go um, iron, that, uh, iron that and fix that out. Um, not Iron Man it. 
uh, she has to, <laughs> not in the superhero sense, but uh, she has to go <laughs> uh, actually iron it out. And uh, they do mention that video games are sports. It's like on ESPN now. Lulu also introduces Jen at that moment to her groomsmen. It's a tiny dog in a suit with his little tongue sticking out. Jonathan, the dog, who they just had to resuscitate this morning, apparently. Back at jail, k and I'll quote Mr. Immortal here. Ladies, Sebastian, how about this? I still have all those Apple shares I bought in 1981. That's probably worth a lot. Plus, all the gold left to me by my first wife, Baroness Cromwell. Um, yeah, Mr. Immortal has been around doing what he does for a very long time. How about we split it evenly eight ways and call it a day, he says. This is where greed gets sets in and all the wives uh, and husbands start to argue about the time they spent together and how much each person should get. Shed starts DJing at the wedding, meanwhile, under the name DJ in Shedable Hulk. Jen is cringing a little bit at this along with us, <laughs> and she hits the bar, and she realizes it's a cash bar at this wedding, and it's just not Jen's day. She says, what else is she going to do for the next four hours? And she starts dancing alone, not in Hulk form, so I'm thinking Jen's going to start getting a little bit buzzed. Back at GLK and H, Nikki is the one arranging all of the specifications for Mr. Immortal. Is that his name? Um, his actual like, like what what he is gonna give back to all of these uh, women and uh, this man that he's wronged. Um, you know, you can't just do that. If you're immortal, I'm gonna guess you probably should use that power for good. He tries to say, I truly did love each and every one. And then, like, they all say, like, no, no. Like, he gets cut, completely cut off by them. So he says, okay, we are done. Jen is leaving a kind of drunk voicemail to Bruce at the wedding. And, we, I mean, for a second, we think we're going to get to see Bruce again. I wonder what he's doing. He's off planet right now. We know this. Um, is this going to be, like, a movie that we're going to get later? Or what's going on with Bruce Banner right now? What, what is he doing? What is, what is he up to? Josh walks up to Jen and she says, I thought Lulu had eaten you. This is the most fun I've seen you have all weekend here, at least Wednesday and Thursday, he tells her. He is so wasted. <laughs> she starts making up all these uh, pet names for him. Josh, Joshua, Josh and, son, Josh and son. She's really excited about his name. She says, good face, too. She's getting very flirty with Josh. I, 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 I sense the chemistry here, but I also am not super... Like, I'm a little suspicious of everyone coming Jennifer Walters' way right now after that attack on her at the end of that episode. Trust no one. I also want love for Jennifer Walters. This is me being paranoid, uh, but uh, I don't know, man. She's She-Hulk, and people are trying to get her blood. Um, that's just me. That's just me. We'll see by the end of this episode, right? Jen tells Josh that she just wanted to come to one wedding and show that she was actually doing pretty good. She also informs him that she doesn't have a boyfriend or a husband or anything, and he says, good to know. She pulls him in close and she says, let me tell you a secret. Completely wasted, by the way. <laughs> I'm actually doing really so good, and I have a great job lawyering the law, and I am so strong. And she grabs his tie. Dude, I'm really strong. <laughs> and you should see what my she-hole hair looks like, she tells him. He says he would love to see it. And she says she can't do it here, obviously. Part of me was expecting her to just like turn into She-Hulk here because of how drunk she is. And when she does that, I'm thinking that she's not going to even be drunk anymore. Everyone's saying how amazing She-Hulk is, and I just wanted to be amazing tonight, she says. Aw, you know, for lack of better words, that is just really sweet and kind of... You know, you gotta kind of feel for Jen on that. She's telling... She's kind of opening up in a sense... She's saying that everything's going really great, but she really wants to be appreciated as Jen. She really does. She really accepts being She-Hulk, but she really does want to be known, loved, and appreciated just for being Jen. Josh says, I think you're pretty great. Maybe Josh is just a guy who's really great for her, and uh, she deserves that. Something overcomes her, and she has to go outside to actually throw up because she's not She-Hulk. She can't maintain this alcohol. And as she's going outside to do that, she has a hand on her shoulder to like kind of comfort her. And she's saying, yeah, let it out, babe. Let it all out. And it's Titania, and she gets literally punched in the face by her. Oh, my gosh. She eyes her nails, then looks at Jen, uh, who's laying on the ground. 
completely wasted still. She says, knew it. Titania replies, obviously, I literally said this isn't over. So now I'm going to publicly destroy you. Jen says, I won that fair and square and to get over it. Titania replies, I don't get over anything, and she pushes her straight on her back. Titania asks her, are you not going to turn? <laughs> Jen replies, I could take you like this, and you see like two Titanias, and she takes a swing and falls flat on her face. This is just sad, Titania replies. It's no fun unless you're She-Hulk. Come on. Jen is on the floor laughing, and she says, why are you so obsessed with me? And Titania replies, I'm not obsessed with you, although it seems like everyone else is. You don't get to ruin everything for me for something you don't even want, something you don't even deserve. So now I am forced to prove it, so green up. It takes her a second, and she tries to do it, and she forgets for a second because she's, you know, really drunk. But it comes into perspective, and yeah, she kicks Titania back into the wedding. And it is that brawl that we were hoping for last week and wanted, and we are getting it right now. She-Hulk slams her feet and the patio cracks, sending Titania flying into the reception hall. She-Hulk strides inside, spotting her Josh grins. She waves with a small smile. Titania gets to her feet. She-Hulk marches towards her and leaps into the air. Chad shouts out, we got a wedding fight! Electric Boogie by Marcia Griffith starts playing. As Titania kicks She-Hulk, Josh winces. Titania lands several blows. She-Hulk blocks one, grabs her foe's arm, and slugs her in the face. And man, does it look like it hurts. Titania collides with the server, knocking him over. She glowers at She-Hulk, who glares down at her. Standing, Titania notices several guests recording her on her phone. This is about to go viral. Oh, she charges at She-Hulk, but trips on ice and lands flat on her face. As Titania stands, her teeth are just completely wrecked. She says, my veneers... Oh, you think this is funny? Are you showing your 11 followers on Instagram? She knocks the phone out of one spectator's hand. She knocks a server on his back. Where are you going? And I'm taking this. Literally takes the wedding cake and leaves. This wedding sucks, she says. Wow, she is, she's probably ruined Titania after this. Lulu walks in and, you know, She-Hulk is very apologetic at first. But Lulu is like, She-Hulk is at my wedding. Oh my goodness. And it's okay. It's all good. Back at GLK and H, we found out that Mallory is married after her and Nikki are talking about how Mr. Immortal is just, how he even got away with any of this. They're watching a video of him landing on the car when they see a post about She-Hulk, so they try and go into the site, and later when they do, they see a ton of, like, death threats and, like, really creepy, like, stuff, like, threatening She-Hulk's life on the internet. Mallory tells Nikki they're just trolls. Any attention at all that Jen gives them, it's giving them what they want. And Jen is better off not knowing and living her life. Later, Nikki is literally on the phone saying, it's called Intelligentsia and it's literally like all these memes and death threats. But Mallory said not to tell you because she said it would make you feel bad and we should protect you. She left this in a voicemail. And Jen and Josh are eating fries, and Jen doesn't really get this in real time. And she's being surveilled. And this is where we leave at the end of the episode. Is the next phase of the plan ready to go, says Hulk King. Additional information on Jen covers the entire monitor. Macro blood levels. Um, they have all the information that Bruce was studying in his lab, it looks like. And then we get the syringe that failed on her that one week a few weeks ago and then a new heavy duty looking syringe with a radiation warning and uh that closes on a briefcase um that is horrifying and i want jen to be safe this is not looking super great and this is why we need our friend daredevil um on her side i'm really looking forward to seeing him and really hoping that he's going to be there with her whenever like this threat comes about hopefully not next week or next week we want to see like whatever is going to come come from this but uh yeah i mean oh my gosh what a, what an episode what an episode what a treat courtroom sketches so uh, photos from the wedding. We show Titania at the dentist. We see Mallory and Nikki together in one of them. I like that these change every episode. That's really fun. Again, there's no post credit scene this episode. 
time to go to reddit.com slash rmarvelstudios to see what the fans are saying. Guyver423 says the bride and the rest of the bridesmaids are the worst. Um, Six foot midget 93 says they are they are absolutely wanted her for her powers uh, in reply to that. Um, that's a little bit of a, an offensive name, I gotta say. Um, if anyone wants a direct link to the Intelligentsia page, it's linked to, it's linked to Reddit itself. Yeah, it, it looked a lot like Reddit. Uh, what people expected? Daredevil. What we got? Mr. Immortal. <laughs> I'd say it's a fair trade. Yeah, uh, that, that's what, uh, Smarkus Strumman said. Yeah, fair, fair. Dr. Orgasmo says, well, I guess I can't be mad at this episode. They really trolled us hard after last week's tease. Yeah, they did a little bit, but we're going to have to wait for Daredevil. It's going to be a big payoff. Um, the Johnny346 replied, let's just hope, uh, let's just hope as this wedding was happening, Matt was making his way to L.A. to pick up his new suit. Agreed. <laughs> um, away from... Canuck says, what the fuck? The dude who is immortal and kills himself to avoid having to talk with his wife, wife's to divorce. I know, just in general, like a giant what the fuck to that. Uh, the B story in this one was good. Uh, Rogerness says, yeah, that was, I mean, just that guy was just so strange. Um, stranger than Doctor Strange almost. Gorilla Pete says, I don't think I've ever seen a DJ with an actual air horn. I know, right? Um, Soft Comfort 7474 says, Damn, Titania fucked up her own teeth. Dude, Titania really messed her teeth up. Really, really, really bad. Um, and a lot of comments about Intelligentsia being Reddit. <laughs> yeah, this episode was pretty straight to the point. It was a bottle wedding episode, um, and that secondary story was really insane. We really got to it. Um, I think a lot of the really intense storytelling is to come in these next few. We got a lot of setup, and I'm really, really nervous for Jen. And uh, whatever's going to come with that needle, um, what are they going to do? Are they going to turn uh, someone into another Hulk? Are we going to have another hulking villain running around? Um, I, I I have a feeling they'll carry that into like another season or something like that. But hopefully, with how good Marvel is, they keep the story super like self-contained um, within one one season. You know what I mean? And we get a whole full story here. Um, I really really enjoyed this episode, though. I think this show needed a few self-contained stories in that of itself and that's what we got we got at least like three of those so now at least the last few episodes are going to have um kind of that overarching story and we'll see where that goes what did you think of this week's episode of she hulk season one episode six just jen this has been Marvel Maniac and MCU After Show. My name is Eric Cicada, a.k.a. Mr. Honest. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that on Patreon.com slash Marvel Maniac. I haven't posted anything there as of recent. There are a few exclusive things you can listen to over there, and I'm going to be posting a few more in the coming weeks slash months. If you have a friend that would be interested in the show, please share it with them. And if you can, leave a review on the show wherever you listen to. It goes a long way. Give it a thumbs up or a like or whatever it may be. Uh, give us your feedback, marvelmaniacpod at gmail.com. Thank you so much for spending your time with me talking about She-Hulk and just nerding out over Marvel. Uh, I know it's not your typical Marvel show, if not just typical, if anything at all. Um, but I... I'm just getting my own pace figured out here, and I am plan on doing this show for a really long time and covering all the Marvel stuff, getting caught up with what I missed this year. And going forward, I would love to keep having you as an audience member. So keep tuning in. Until next time, Avengers, disassemble.